this girl named Imani, I believe. Actually, I don't believe. I know her name was Imani. And uh, I'll never forget her, but she knew me. And we resonated a little bit for like the few words that we exchanged. And she knew I was smart and I knew she was smart too. And like, she wasn't just book smart. Like she was, you know, most of these girls are just book smart, but she was like genuinely intelligent and observant and like empathetic to everyone. Like she was the full package. And uh, I liked her if it wasn't obvious. She was a white girl, curl, curly brown hair. Uh, I remember she even took a jab at me once. Like she was, um, I know she was left-handed and I said something like, oh, aren't left-handed people like not as smart as right-handed people? And immediately, without hesitation, she went like, no, it's just a myth. Just like how people say that, uh, just like how they say people with glasses are smarter than people without it. And like, that was, damn dude, from middle school for, no, not from middle school, this is elementary school. For elementary, this is fourth grade. For being nine years old, dude. She was nine years old. And for her to clap back instantly like that, I couldn't even say anything. Mad respect for her right there. Dude, holy shit. Now I'm thinking about it. That was really, really, really cool that she did that. I don't know how she thought of it so fast. But um, she was cool. And uh, she was academically gifted. And, you know, she was, you know, that one girl. You know the one. Um way out of my league, but actually, I saw a, uh, wait, I saw a TikTok earlier, I have it on Instagram, this actually, um, this is literally what reminded me to, to stream, uh, and then I was talking to them about school, and then never found that, but this is literally what did it, I hope this is still up, because all these TikToks keep getting taken down. That's it, bro. That one girl. That one girl. That's what it was. So, that was her. And, um, I remember she was, like, really, she was, like, a. everyone just knew her as, like, the book smart girl, right? Like, one day we did a, uh, a spelling bee in class. Um, 15 words. I got one right. She got a perfect score. And then she went up against the other classes and the school. And then she kept going up. It's like the like, giant spelling bee, right? And she was like, she was like the rep for our whole, like, whole school or some shit. And she didn't show up to class that day because, you know, it was a spelling bee. And, you know, kids got like, you know, that's the kind of thing. Like if you're academically inclined, you'll be able to skip school quite a lot in the, in the early years. Just like you'll have excuses. The administration will give excuses. Um... I remember, like, that was the day, and it was, like, the whole day thing. There was, like, one hour left in class, and she shows up in class, uh, like, an hour before it ends. And everyone's like, what are you doing here? And she's like, oh, I just wanted to, like, come back home instead of going home so I'd get attendance, you know? And the teacher was like, oh, okay, so, like, uh, what happened? And she's like, oh, I won all nonchalantly. Like, she won the whole thing. She beat everyone. Even, like, those weird Indian kids who decided to like dedicate their lives to academics, this like this all rounder who was good in every subject, she was a god tier in literally all academics and exceptional in all other different kinds of intelligences as well. And like genuinely funny and everything. Okay, I'm 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 gassing her up, but and she looked good too. She really I should have bagged her, bro. I'm so stupid. And the thing is, she like, um, like the teacher and, and her and maybe like a couple others, they knew I was good at math. Cause, um, I remember she actually asked me, like me in particular, to solve a really hard problem that came up. And I would flex to the teachers like, Hey, look, I'm nine years old in fourth grade, and I know all these Pythagorean triples. I know how that, like, I would do things like that, you know, um, like writing on the back of my paper, like, oh, look at this stuff that I can solve. Look at these trinomial equations I could, and I, I would just like, um, and I would always 
try to be really fast at work and to turn in before everyone else to like flex like look I, I'll turn in my paper in, in five minutes everyone else will turn in the paper in 15 minutes then second place will turn in the paper in 15 minutes and everyone else will turn their, theirs in shortly after them but um I'm just so far ahead of everyone else so like the the teacher knew I was like capable and I think because of that you know she knew and she would also use that to call me out in front of the class like oh look at what Imani's able to do look you never turn in your work and uh, she would call me out in front of the whole class. And this was one of those classes. This was not the first time this happened. But this was also one of the classes where she had a folder stapled to the wall with my name on it. And only me for me to submit my assignments. It wasn't as blatant. Um, and I didn't submit that many assignments to that folder either. Uh, I got in a lot of trouble the year before in Miss Sanders' class, third grade, Jackson Elementary. And in that one... It was like in the middle of the class and there was like nothing else around it and everyone saw it like every day. So that one was really embarrassing. This one was a little less embarrassing, but yeah, it was still only me. So that's like the preface um, of like this like fourth grade class, right? We're nine years old, fourth grade. Um, and I remember like they had dropped like Transformers 2 or they were going to drop it or something like that. And we were all like so hyped. Because we all like love Transformers 1, right? So it's Jeopardy Day. And we split off into guys versus girls, which is a really stupid idea because the girls always win. Um, just in overall academics, generally. Like they usually win, right? They care about that kind of shit. Like on, on average, a little more. Just a tiny bit more. And the tiny bit sways it enough. And so the girls are trying... And the guys are just sitting back, just talking. And we're doing the bare minimum. And I remember we were talking about, I'll never forget this, we were talking about Megan Fox and how hot she was. And I don't know how we made a whole conversation out of it, but somehow we did. It's, I have a, it's a very vivid memory for me. And at one point, I'm thinking to myself, like, you know what? Let me just see what, what the deal is with this Jeopardy, right? Let me, let me actually try on this next question. Because look, like, by the time, like, second grade ended, I had given up on school because I had already moved. Um, I understood that none of this meant anything, but I still loved math. And I liked how good I was at it. I liked how much I could flex at it and how much I could crush all the other students at it. Um, and I could do it effortlessly. It's all, it was all mental. It was all mental math. I never used any paper. Um, like, I literally learned multiplication when I was four. Uh, just by overhearing my mom helping my brother learn it. Like, he's four years older than me, and he was learning it in school at the time, and I was running around playing with cars and stuff, and just from overhearing it, I was able to learn it and show my mom, hey, look, I know how to multiply, and I was able to do it. Um, at the very least, I understood the concept, and for bigger numbers, for anything greater than, like, you know, three times five, um, I had to just count it, but I understood the concept just from hearing them mention right and wrong answers for questions that he was learning. So I still love math and I still wanted to test myself and I've lost all my love for math at this point. I hate it now, but at the time I still loved it. But yeah, none of my motivation came from the school or this like societal pressure like these girls, you know? They were doing it to please whoever, adults, you know. I was just doing it for myself. So, I never cared about doing it the way that they wanted me to do it. So, there was this math question that was next. And I forgot exactly how it goes, but I'll never forget the answer. It was 36. Um, and it was a word problem. And I read it. After about 20 seconds of reading it, I had my answer. It was a very simple problem. It wasn't like a complicated Jeopardy. It wasn't like... Uh, I, it was, it was somewhat complicated. I don't know what number the... I think this might have been like a 200 uh, point question or something like that. It was a relatively easy word problem. And um, 20 seconds, I had my answer. It was 36. And, you know, these guys are chilling, talking about Megan Fox. And I called the teacher. The way it works is like, if you have the answer, you go like, I have the answer. And then you tell it in the teacher's ear. Um, and then if you're right, the team gets a point. And if you're wrong, then the other team can steal it and your team can't uh, answer in the next little while while the other team tries to steal it. 
And uh, that's why you say it in the teacher's ear, so that way the other team doesn't hear it. And this is not like the normal way that Jeopardy goes, but after I gave my answer, uh, I realized like the actual reason why she made this rule. Um, because I told her my answer, 36, and she goes like, where's your work? And I'm like, I did it in my head. Isn't it right? And she's like, I don't know. I need to see your work. I'm actually getting kind of pissed off thinking about it. And she goes back to her desk, which was like, that's how you leave the conversation right there. And that's when I gave up. That was the moment. I rem I remember so distinctly how I felt, dude. I felt, I felt defeated. Like, why the hell am I a part of this stupid fucking pathological system where, where the people who are running it are just complete fucking idiots? Why do I have to deal with that? And after that day, I never raised my hand to answer a question in any class ever again after that point ever. That right there not only hate, made me hate school, it made me hate math. Because it wasn't just that. Like, that was a straw that broke the camel's back. But wait, there's more. On the other side, the girls, and this, listen, I had already given up. Because, like, this is a straw that broke the camel's back. And if this wasn't what broke the camel's back, like, 15 more straws piled on after it. And it would have done it regardless. And I remember being so pissed. And imagine how pissed I was, and then all this stuff happening. Like, the, the, on the girls' team, they, uh, they go like, okay, okay, we have a chance here, we have a chance here. And they're like trying to figure out, they're like really frantic about it. They're like trying to figure out an answer. And the way it works is like it's team-based, so everyone can work together. You know, all the guys can work with all the guys, all the girls can work with all the girls. And then one person who's like a representative says the answer. And after that, like... After I gave my answer, like, five minutes or so, like, legit, minutes passed by, and they called the teacher. Keep in mind the differences between me and them, okay? First of all, I wasn't trying. They were giving it their all. Secondly, I wasn't alone. They were working as a... I was alone. They were working as a team. Third, I did it mentally, okay? They were double-checking, triple-checking on paper. Fourth... They had Imani as their spokesperson, checking all, like leading the group, right? Nobody else thought I was good at math. When the teacher was going around saying one day, like, to the people, like, oh, you want to get help from math? You can talk to your classmates. This person's good at math. David is good at math. Imani's good at math. And going through, she looked at me and she skipped to the next person because she knew I wouldn't help anyone. She knew I wasn't out here to make an impression on the, on the like, as if I'm you know, a model citizen that'll actually help them. So she knew, like, I wasn't, I wasn't with it like that. And the other students, most of the students didn't actually realize how good I actually was. Um, they, they kind of, they knew, literally even in high school, like, I would do something insane, they'd be like, whoa, you're crazy good at this. And then I would get like a zero on, on my classwork assignment because I wouldn't turn it in. And they'd be like, dog, you're trash at this. And they never bothered to think, and it never occurred to them, like, wait, I was really good, but I just never tried. To them, they sort of just averaged it out, like, with my grade, and were like, oh, you're just mediocre at math. But they never, like, put the pieces together. I don't know why. They never bothered to think about it all that much. They just never tried, and it didn't really matter, you know. Um, except when people tried to cheat off me, then they thought about it, and they, you know, made the right decision to actually cheat off me. But those... Four, they had four advantages, all right? Fifth, they took all this time because they had unlimited time. They literally took like five minutes. I took like 20, 30 seconds. And sixth, the sixth thing, when they told their answer to the teacher, they got it wrong after all that. And I remember saying it out loud, like out of frustration. I said out loud to the, the whole class could hear me. I was like, this is stupid. And I think uh, some of them might actually still remember it. I got to maybe see if I could get me in contact with them to like verify the story. Because it sounds like a crazy story, but it legit happened. And some of them might actually remember it. And uh, 
I might have a mutual who could reach back out to those kids. But yeah, that was a story of uh, what I did that that resulted in me throughout the rest of my entire school career not caring about any of this stuff. This is why. This was the domino effect. This was the first domino that led to the final domino of me, you know, getting kicked out of high school, getting my diploma from an online thing, dropping out of college. It's why I got a 1.7 GPA. It's why all of this shit, like, this one singular incident, the stars just aligned and it gave me that sign. And it resulted in all this. That's when I was like, fuck this, sh- fuck school, fuck books, fuck books, books are for pussies, go hit the gym. It's really stupid looking back on it, because like, what's the reason for making me show my work? I wasn't an idiot as a kid, okay, I wasn't like super smart, I was no Imani, but I wasn't an idiot, okay? Even then I, I, I at least needed some sort of reasonable justification, because even I understood what good reason was there for me to show my work if I was capable of doing it without showing my work? Why force me to learn it, learn to do it in a specific way if I can do it in my way? Just so I can make sure my mind ends up like everyone else? So they can make sure, you know, we're all the same exact person at the end of the day and nobody has any sort of individuality in the way that they approach life and approach problems? Why desensitize creativity and being an individual? But hey, I guess, you know, that's just public schools in America at its best. For someone who lives in a developed country, or, you know, for for someone who is homeschooled, if you're in any situation like this, you should know one thing about American schools if you don't live in America. Thinking isn't allowed, okay? Okay. You want to go there and actually use your brain? Mm -mm, No, 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 you can't do that. That's too much freedom. You might actually do something with your life, you know? They want you to be a slave. They want you to go to to school and and, uh, graduate and go get a job and work that nine to five for 40 years and uh, let the the people who, who are desperate to cling on to their mortality continue to do so while letting everybody below them uh, uh, make them have easy lives. So... If you're if you're smart enough to uh, figure out your own way to solve your own problems, sucks to suck. This knowledge that uh, they're going to teach you is useless. Who cares? Adults are too too worried about who's going to be the next president, or or you know, some dumb shit like that to actually worry about the education of their kids. So uh, they're going to do whatever they want, and they're going to screw you over if you're a kid in public schools in America. And um, what they want is to punish you for being exceptional or punish you for standing out. And even I'm like, I don't do anything about it, right? I don't like take a stand or whatever. But when I get to thinking, I I realize how, how like, cra- how crazy it is that like kids grow up thinking that school is supposed to be boring and they just become adults and when their kids tell them they hate school they go like oh yeah it's gonna be boring you just have to deal with it like no you dumbass school shouldn't be boring it shouldn't suck in fact you'd have to try to make kids school boring like kids will enjoy anything kids enjoy the most mundane garbage you give a a kid like a banana for Christmas, and they'd be like, cool, I'm going to play with this for hours. Kids enjoy anything. You want something to be boring? You have to really, really try. It has to be, it's difficult to make something boring for kids. And and that should be a warning sign. Like if something is boring for kids, they probably shouldn't be doing it. You really have to analyze what good reason is there for them to do that. But no, these people just assume because you know they school was boring for them and they grew up to be who they were and you know when their kids go to school it's boring for their kids like naturally think about it naturally kids want to learn okay i don't want to have to elaborate on this because i think you're a fucking idiot if you don't already realize this 
But I'm going to explain it anyways. From the time that kids are born, you know, they're going around, you know, dropping eggs to to see what they'll do and, and stepping on glass and putting things in their mouths to see how they taste and clicking every button they see and touching people's faces and, and doing all this like crazy shit, you know, putting their hands in, in hot things and picking up bugs. They're natural scientists. They explore the world. They don't need to be taught to be scientists. They just want to learn about the world around them. You'd honestly have to try really, really hard to snuff out this very natural, born-in, baked-in desire out of these kids that they're born with and they exhibit from day one. And yet, school somehow manages to do it. And kids always say they hate school. They're right. They're not stupid. I hate when people treat kids like they're stupid. They're literally not stupid. They hate school for a reason. And this shit just pisses me off. Listen, I love America, right? But our schooling is complete garbage. 